Hi, I'm Jordan from Kentner Creative, and in this video I want to show you the difference between an analog audio console and a digital audio console. So on my right we have the Yamaha MG16, which is a fairly popular analog console, and on my left we have the Allen & Heath QU16, which is a fairly popular digital console. So both consoles do really well at mixing levels uh, without a lot of adjustment. The analog console has some basic EQ settings and it can mix up to two submixes. So this means that for if you're in a band and the vocalist needs a separate mix than what the audience is hearing, it can do two mixes like that. The Allen & Heath and most digital consoles can do upwards of 10 or, or more uh, submixes at the same time. Now to mix the submixes on the analog console, you have these little rotary pots which you can adjust to set the mix. But on the digital console, you can use the same faders that you're using for your main mix and then you just switch it to say the, the drummer's mix and all the faders will adjust and then you just adjust the mix as you need and then you go back to the main mix and it'll go back the way it was. So that makes it a lot, it's a lot more intuitive when you're setting levels uh, repeatedly throughout the night uh, just to switch between the mixes that way. Uh, the one benefit of the analog console is you can see everything that's going on at a glance. Uh, so you can see where all the settings are set. The downside is you can't set as many things or there's not as many tools in the analog console for you to use to make improve the sound at your event. So the basic EQ settings is it's basic, there's set frequencies. There is a mid sweep on this one, but there's set frequencies that you can basically just move up or down. It doesn't give you a lot of tools for uh, fine adjusting. On the Allen and Heath and most digital consoles, you can set the frequency that you want to adjust. So say you want to scroll over to 350 hertz and then you can drag it down or up however you want and you can set how many frequencies you're dragging down with it or the width which is very handy for especially in like we do a lot of ballrooms where there's always like one or two frequencies that are causing feedback and you can just quickly select them and knock them out and then you don't have feedback uh, throughout the rest of your event. On the digital console there's a bunch more tools as well. So we have the compressor. So the compressor will set the maximum volume that you're letting the channel go. And once it goes over that threshold, it takes everything above it and it just squishes it down. So you, um, like we've all been to events where a dynamic speaker decides he wants to, you know, yell or emphasize a certain point. Now we can allow that to a certain extent. And then once it breaks a certain threshold, we compress it down so that way you're not like you can let him be a dynamic speaker but you're not shocking the audience or you're not actually doing hearing damage uh, if they go over a certain limit or if we're at like a press conference we do a lot of press conferences you can set the maximum level so then you know that it will never distort on the camera's audio feed or the media's audio feed you want to keep it in that safe working range as much as possible and that's the most important thing uh, there's also a gate so a gate works well on a drum kit is the best uh, example I can think of. So when you don't want like the mics on your toms to hear the other tom. So you can set the level that you want it to be before it's allowed to come through the sound system. So if you think about having a, a five person panel on a stage, you don't want all the lab mics to be on at once because then you hear a lot of breathing noise and sighing and that sort of thing. But as soon as somebody talks, you want their voice to come out of the sound system. So the gate allows you to set that threshold. Um, you should use it sparingly. It can catch you off guard and sound choppy if you're not using it right. Um, other than that, uh, the, I think the biggest benefit of using a digital mixer is your ability to save your mix for the next event. So if you're in a touring band or if you're doing a lot of repetitive conferences with the same input list, uh, it allows you to save that show with you and then the next night when you're at the next venue, you can load up the mix. So you don't have to worry about um, doing a lot of the pre-work. It's all there and then you're just into the fine tuning. You're not starting from scratch every time you turn on the board, which is nice. We're on the analog console. I mean, the rule of thumb is at the end of the night, you're supposed to be putting all the uh, adjustments back down to zero, right? So the next guy can walk in and he has a baseline to start from. The digital one allows you to bring your mix with you, uh, which is super handy. 
if you have any questions about these two or why they would be required at any event, please email us events at kettnercreative com or give us a phone call 604-427-1629 and we'd be happy to walk you through uh, which is the right for your event. Thanks so much.